And here we are. Hey, everybody, turn on your mics. Flip hello, the hello. Oh, hello. Mics. What's up, everybody? Hey. What's up? <laughs> hey. oh. All right. So you've been waiting. You're ready for the annular solar eclipse live stream hosted by the Emil Bueller Planetarium. We've got the Central Florida Astronomical Society. We've also got the International Planetarium Society, and these experts have so kindly and graciously invited three non-experts from the library. Hey, here we wait, are. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. You guys are experts in the live streaming stuff, okay? We couldn't do this okay. without you. Derek, we just got started, so don't give me too much credit, okay? Don't give us too much credit just yet. All right. So how are we doing? How are we feeling out there? It's so that day, October 14th. So far, so good. I out here in the middle of nowhere. I mean, the closest little town is about an hour away. Running off of Starlink. Starlink is is providing our internet right now. So, for those that are you know contentious about Starlink, you know we're able to show the clips using Starlink. So pretty cool. All right. So Derek, you're the director of the, and I can't say the name right right now. Emil Bueller. Emil Bueller. Yeah, Emil Bueller. Bueller. Emil Bueller. Bueller Planetarium, as Mike Michael remembers, as we call it, whatever Seminole State College Planetarium, whatever you want to call it. Seminole State, go 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 state, go far. <laughs> there it was, and of course, um, Frank Kane. And um, can you go ahead and um, introduce yourself a little bit further? Yeah, hey, I'm Frank from the uh, Central Florida Astronomical Society, where I'm the president. Uh, we have our meetings at the Emil Bueller Planetarium once a month, and uh, I'm going to be later on streaming views of the partial eclipse here from Central Florida and Merritt Island. You can see that already the sun, the uh, moon's taking a bite out of the sun there. And we've got our solar telescope set up here to give you live streams of that later on tonight. Awesome. And Michael, I'm going to go ahead and highlight you here if you can inter introduce yourself a little bit further. Absolutely. I'm Mike McConville. I'm president of the International Planetarium Society. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be providing a little bit of like the color commentary today. Uh, I had the honor of working with Derek for uh, close to 15 years at the, the Bueller Planetarium. Uh, and so to be able to come back and, and you know, participate in something as cool as the annular eclipse live stream. I'm here outside of Philadelphia and it is raining and completely clouded out. So this is my way of being able to enjoy the eclipse this afternoon. Awesome. And Derek, I know you have someone else there with you that helped um, get some stuff started um, earlier. Yeah. Yep. yeah, we had to do a bunch of setup. Oh, just in time. It's just in time. We got vids. We got vids. All right, hopefully everyone's tuned in and enjoying this amazing event. Holy smokes, we are almost there. What, maybe 20 more minutes? 20 more minutes, yes. Uh, yeah, around that time, yeah. That's pretty right. close. Yeah, I'm Not putting the footage friend. back in here, How Derek, because... Yes, we got a little bit of clouds coming through, but you can still see it. You can still see the sun. Uh, and it, it, it kind of looks like a, 
Let me let me increase the exposure a little bit. There we go. Oh, that looks yeah, we're gonna get, get increase the exposure. There we go. Yes. So uh, it, this is kind of actually very close to the maximum to uh, eclipse in Florida. So we're kind of have a little bit of preview on that. Wow, that um, but uh, the clouds are coming through a little bit. We have a little bit of a, a a light cloud, but not enough to really destroy our view of the eclipse. And so I'll kind of have to adjust the exposure a little bit from time to time. But we can see the moon going right through that little tiny dot just below the moon there. That's a sunspot, a massive magnetic storm on the sun. Some of these sunspots can be as big as planet Earth. So we're going to that, that sunspot's going to eventually be eclipsed by the moon very soon. And uh, in less than uh, 30 minutes, we're going to have what we call annularity, where the moon will completely uh, block the sun, except for one small little sliver of the sun around the edges, creating that ring effect. Okay. Um, did you say ring effect? Like ring effect? Yeah. Okay. Like look- a. Okay, we got a video. <laughs> As to not get a copyright strike, not like we're monetized yet. Okay, <laughs> that that's right. The ring effect. <laughs> circular object appearing to be a blaze we'll go ahead and call it that today okay information jason i'm gonna highlight you what's going on in the comment section what are people talking about uh nicole everybody's saying in florida it's kind of cloudy right now so mm. what, what do, do we have any meteorologists on the on the line here How, how's the weather going to affect it i'm ready to go right now i'm inside with sunglasses on so i'm not sure if i'm doing this the right <laughs> way no not, not not good don't don't wear sunglasses you gotta what? wear these really sexy eclipse glasses that's what you gotta wear yeah talk a little bit more about that derek because we want to make sure that wherever people are watching um that they understand um the safety precautions they should take yeah so these are eclipse glasses they are actually certified by the international standards organization also known as iso and these are certified to officially allow you to safely look at the eclipse uh, uh, and, and of course, when you look at the eclipse, all you got to do is pop these on, look up, and you will see the sun. So pretty awesome stuff there. So um, be sure to always wear these. Now, with an annual eclipse, you always have to have these on in order to actually look at the sun. During a total eclipse, when the moon completely covers the, the sun, you can actually take your eclipse glasses off during that totality. Otherwise, you have to have these bad boys on to actually safely look at the sun um, you know, during an eclipse. Now, authority is contextual. That's a librarian phrase. Okay, Google it, people. We're listening to what Derek Demeter has to say about this topic because he is an expert. In fact, he refers to himself commonly as the Astro Boy. We've got a vid for that. It's Derek the Astro Boy. There he is, people. Trust him. He knows what he's talking about, okay? All right, um... So let's open it up. Let's see. We asked as people were joining us, where are you? Oh, we got Morgan Tracy is ready for the eclipse out here in Lake Mary, Florida. We've got Andrea Ogden, Utah. Hey, Derek, you're out in Utah, right? That's right. I'm out in the middle of the uh, Great Basin Desert here in Utah. Uh, Again, closest town is about an hour away. And um, how much of an odyssey did you go through last night in the past 24 hours, rather, to make it out there with the proper equipment? It wasn't an easy feat, was it? No, it wasn't. In fact, uh, so uh, this, the first Starlink that we got actually was, unfortunately, um, there was a connection issue. So we actually, me and my friend, actually drove up to Salt Lake City, which is about two and a half hours away, to pick up a new Starlink receiver and brought it back here. Now, obviously, here I am streaming out. So uh, it was a total trip of about five to six hours. Yeah, about five and a half hours to go back there, come back here, set it up. But, you know, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do to show off the sun. We got a big, big cloud coming through right now, but it should peer peer back in a few seconds here. Big cloud. Now, um, Frank, you've got... um some footage can we see what it's looking like frank you're in um melbourne i'm just gonna clear up a little bit of space here so we can see you 
Yeah, we're in Merritt Island, Florida out here and uh, got a live view of the eclipse going on right now. And uh, the clouds have been clearing up pretty nicely out here, I got to say. So hopefully other people in Central Florida will be getting that as well as that clearing hopefully heads in your direction. Uh, but you can see that moon is already starting to take a slice out of the sun there. And we're looking toward a about 63% coverage from here in Merritt Island around uh, 1 30 p.m. today. Okay. Now, um, Derek, since you're, um, and Frank, since you're some of the main experts, and I'll pop Michael back in here as well. Um, in what, approximately 15 minutes, 20 minutes? About 20 minutes, yeah. Okay. Uh, annularity is about 1028. So that's where, uh, so 1228 your time. Okay. So, do we know how fast is the moon moving? Like, how, it's going to be, uh, we're going to be able to see it for about like four or so minutes, but like, really like what's happening out there it looks to us like just like a little bit of a motion but what what are the speeds what's the rotations can you tell us uh so roughly about 15 degrees per hour um is basically the amount of time it takes for the moon to travel in about an hour or so so i'm trying to convert that into minutes here frank do you, do you have the you have a calculator i see michael laughing yes Mike, do you know? Michael, tell oh. hey. No, oh. it, uh, the, the entire eclipse, uh, you know, shadow on Earth to shadow off Earth, a little less than three hours. Right. Uh, and of course, we're looking at uh, our moon at a distance. It's a, this is a little bit further away. It's, of course, why we have an annular eclipse, because when the moon is a little bit further away in its orbit from Earth during one of these eclipses, we are able to get the smaller moon uh, as opposed to what we would have during a usual solar eclipse where the moon's going to be close enough to completely cover up the, the face of the sun. Oh. <laughs> Wait, was that a hand trying to cover up your face? <laughs> Uh, we got some kids. Um, this is the cool. Astro Sun. Uh, you can see there's. Oh, Uncle Derek. I have a video for Astro Boy, but not Astro Sun. <laughs> okay, well, um, is this? Tell your dad thanks for showing us the facts. So, <sighs> show me the facts, right, Derek? See, That's I wrote right. down. I'll, I'm trying to make your dreams come true here. Facts. Okay. All right. So let's um, peek back at how that cloud is doing. Let's bring back yeah, Info so here, J. Yeah, so here we got we got the sun kind of poking out. We got these little we have a little bit of cloud cover going through right now, but it should actually improve here in a few moments because I'm looking towards the west. The, the clouds are moving from the west to the east. I'm looking over behind me, and the clouds are getting a little bit less uh, thick towards the uh, towards the west here. So I think we will we we will be there during annularity. Hopefully, uh, get a really nice shot there. But you can see as we're coming through, you can see they're getting closer. The moon is the moon is slowly but surely going to be covering the sun very soon. Okay. Now, Derek, um, you are also a accomplished astrophotographer. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, in fact, actually, during the 2017 eclipse, um, the eclipse shot that I photographed was for the astronomy picture of the day, which was pretty cool. Um, and, uh, and I know Michael was the chief, uh, lead on the eclipse event in central Florida at Seminole state college. I'm sure he could talk about that. Experience. Yeah. These, cl these clouds really do bring back some memories. Uh, we were, uh, pretty clear, uh, up until I think it was about 1 PM on total eclipse day. And that was, uh, August 21st back in 2017. And then, uh, it was central Florida in the summertime, which meant that we got clouded out and then it rained and we're moving telescopes under tents and overhangs, whatever we could get our hands on. Uh, and it was about 245, which was right about the max totality for us, little under 90% of the sun being obscured. And I remember walking across uh, one of the quads at Seminole State. I was drenched, really uh, wasn't looking forward to the rest of the day. We'd miss out on the sun. Uh, I look up in the sky and through the clouds, see an eclipse that's almost identical to what Derek's showing in the telescopes now. Uh, and my immediate reaction was, oh, I should probably tell people to look up, except I'm seeing this eclipse sun without any eclipse glasses, without a telescope. I want to what? set a good example, uh, <laughs> thick enough clouds to make this work. Everybody, you know, we're screaming it out. It's across the speakers. Put on your glasses and look up. 
everybody looks up and there's about two or three thousand people left over from uh, our peak of uh, security had us between 13 and 15 thousand people on campus that day uh, uh, Seminole they, State? at Seminole State oh. uh, our president at the time Dr. <laughs> McGee uh, loves to tell the story about how to get from the main road 1792 next to the college to her parking spot took her an hour on the first day of class uh and everybody looked up at once and there was just this collective oh across like half of campus really like one of the the coolest moments i've ever been a part of uh, and then it cleared up for the rest of the day and we were able to see uh the eclipse and so it wasn't a total one you know derek did some some great work out there in wyoming but uh really a a a seminal moment in the history of Seminole State College. Uh, well said, well said. Really, awesome. you know, excited to be part of it. And, and, you know, not to get too far ahead of ourselves. Yes, we have an eclipse next year in 24 that's going to be visible across the U.S. Uh, but 2045, I think Derek's preparing for this one. 2045, we've got a five and a half minute solar eclipse over Seminole State and the rest of Central Florida. So yeah, uh, I, I, yeah put I that on your start, calendars. I got I to gotta start planning that eclipse now because, uh, yeah, it's going to be the eclipse of the century for us in Seminole State. So, uh, yeah, hey, is, that, we, is that on a Saturday? What day is Let me write that one down. It's, it's, 2045? Oh, it's August 12th, 2045. Go look it up on 2045? a calendar. 2045? 2045. Know, It'll be the only. Day. Can we move it's it the, a day earlier? <laughs> oh, it, it will be the <laughs> only total solar energy. eclipse. Who popped up in there in Jason Energy? Did you see that? Derek, did you see that? I did. I did. Yes. That was you. That was you. Yeah. Now, yeah. listen. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer, but we're not there yet. Now, not when yet. Um, the totalitary, the view, the an an annularity, I know it's a weird name, but when the annularity occurs, yeah. now you had told me before we started broadcasting, you're going to have to pop up and get a photograph. No, like, no, actually, is... actually, I'm able to control. I'm, 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 I was able to control <gasps> using my, this computer here. So uh, I'm using okay. actually EOS Utility, which allows me to oh. do some capturing the photos at the same time, which means I don't have to cover a thousand, you know, different tasks at once. No, so. because footage is very important. Footage, 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 footage. footage, footage. Like academics, and we love uh, footage, uh, rock footage, and roll footage. music. Ross, can you check to see if there's a band called Annularity? <laughs> there has to be, right? There, I mean, there has to be. If there, it was, if there is, between you and Ross, Jason, like, y'all should know about it. I mean, what is that one band, Mustard Plug? I thought y'all were on the program telling bad jokes, but it was a band name, so y'all know all the music. Okay. Oh, Frank's got his view up. Once again, Frank Kane from the Central Florida Astronomical Society is in Merritt Island, Florida, and he's got live Footage, footage, yes, footage. Footage, 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 footage. Yeah, just checking in on happen. it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got many pictures, absolutely. Yeah, and by the way, folks, if you're out there, um, if you have any trees that are casting shadows on the pavement, take a look down instead of up because those uh, leaves can act as little tiny pinhole cameras and you might see little tiny shadows that look like what you're seeing on my screen on the ground right now. So it's a fun little thing to do. Awesome. Awesome. Is okay, anybody let's watching take... from outside? Derek's the only one well, outside. We're all inside and I have glasses on and I'm told to go outside. Now I do I have a hat. I want to let you all know it's like 45 degrees outside. So definitely not uh, Florida. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. This... That's chilly. I had to drive through a snowstorm a couple days ago. You know. All right. Let's take a peek. You didn't tell me about that. It just keeps getting worse, Derek. <laughs> Six oh, yeah. hour said, extra right. drive to get a car. Snowstorm. Uh, <laughs> it was wild. I mean, you know, to Mike, Michael, you, you, you that's a that's every day, you know, in, in, in Pennsylvania, right? Now. Derek, where do you get the glasses from Publix? You're the only one who has those glasses. What do I, what, well, I don't know. I don't, I'm sure Frank has some glasses. I'm sure Frank has where, some glasses. Where are the places people should get glasses? Derek, right look, now it's look at those sexy, look at those sexy glasses that Frank has. You gotta look, look good while you're looking at the eclipse. Yeah, look Absolutely. At those. I can't see a dang thing right now though. 
That's what I'm saying. I can see perfectly fine. If you're not seeing anything, though, that's a good sign. And then you told us to look down on the ground for the eclipse. I'm so so confused. (laughs) You you can take the glasses off for that. Yeah. It's like an aperture. Like the tree leaves create. It's almost like a pinhole camera, like a right, like a effect, a pinhole camera effect. Now you can make your own pinhole camera. Definitely Google that for the next uh, solar eclipse. Everybody that's watching. Um, but uh, the the leaves of the trees acts as that, and so you're not looking directly at the sun, but it kind of acts. It gives shows you an image of it. Yeah, it's really cool. And if you don't have a tree uh, next to your driveway, just get a like a colander, like the sort of thing that you use to strain the water out of your spaghetti. That works too. And hold it up to the sun, and you'll get a little tiny little pictures of the eclipse all over so the ground. Here, here's, here's something going on. I, I've already noticed a temperature drop in the last mm. five yeah. minutes. Because we're getting closer. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was a little warm, and now I'm actually kind of shivering. I'm like, I'm a frozen frozen little popsicle here. Uh, you know, it, you, you can feel a temperature drop, right? Yeah, yeah, temperature is dropping. Right? Yeah, That's yeah. a question I had. He, he's not warm at all. But... <laughs> Ross, you got a question? No, that was a question I had. Was the, Does an eclipse have an impact on the temperature and the atmosphere for that short period of time? Yeah, because uh, cool. we're... We're, and actually, it's a dramatic. It's much more dramatic during a total solar eclipse. But uh, during annularity, you do have a little bit of a temperature drop because you know basically you have the moon blocking a significant amount of the light from the sun. Yeah, Derek, we're seeing that with your video as well. That there is a marked difference in how the light has looked on your face over the last twenty minutes or so, and how that's going to continue as we move toward uh, annularity. And again, like as we've said, even that tiny sliver of sun, even the ring that we have during annularity, there's so much light coming from the sun that even having 90% or 95% of the, the surface blocked means that there's still enough light to hurt our eyes. It's less light and we can see those changes. But again, it's if you've got your 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 eclipse glasses, uh, you've got a properly filtered telescope or you've got appropriate solar binoculars, that's where you're going to be wanting to use for the entirety of the eclipse. And Derek, you'll be happy to know uh, the 2017 eclipse glasses, the first one that came out of the box is still sitting on uh, on the shelf, uh, one of my bookshelves in my office. Nice. Uh, See it every single day. It's great to, to be able to relive that. Um, and yeah, holding out hope for uh, for next year that we'll have a, a wonderful total solar eclipse here across North America. And that will be a total solar eclipse. Today, it's the annular solar eclipse. And when is the next time that there will be another annular solar eclipse? How many years from now? Is that the 2045 one? Or that's another total? No, one? that's going to be a total eclipse. Okay. Take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I gotta look that up. Actually, does anybody know? Um, it's, hopefully, it's on a Monday. A no. Monday would work for me. Can we pencil <laughs> that one in? We're not trying to do a gotcha moment, but my understanding is that this is pretty special. Like, this it's is not special, something yeah. like once again that we can see every day. Like, Jason wants to move it up a day, or can I? You know, it doesn't work with my calendar. No, we can't do that. It's a very unique solar event. Very particular circumstances are coming together, and that's why this is so special. That's why there's how many people watching? All right, Jason? So you're really good. Um, I got yeah, the well, there's uh, 70 views 70, here, Derek. So that means uh, multiplied million? by a billion. That's 70 trillion people are watching trillion. right now, give or take a trillion. Okay. So the, the next time we have an annual eclipse won't happen until June 21st, 2039. Oh, 2039 on that one? Okay, let me pencil that. Okay. Yeah. I got that one. Mark okay. it. You yeah, that, that's, yeah. On a, that's on a Thursday. Yeah. Listen, and one, I hear, on. are we, we're going back to the moon, but um, just to Why let you are people know, behind you taking a picture of I love us it. watching? I love it. You know why? So because you know what's happening? Footage, 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 footage. The picture, I was there, okay? It's it's proof. Now, um, we can't see the surface of the moon in any of the footage that Frank or Derek has, but um, uh, Frank, I I hear you took a little trip up there. Hold on. I got a bit for you. <laughs> Fly no one ever moon. sent me a picture of Frank. So yeah, we got Frank. W- watch it again. Watch it. Again. If I shave, that's totally me. <laughs> Absolutely. And we haven't even heard you sing yet. Okay. <laughs> we should cut right. to uh, Derek's uh, live view there. It's getting pretty close. Oh, very close. 
Yep, How many have minutes four, left? Four, four more minutes left oh. until annularity. Four minutes oh. until annularity. Very cool. We've got a question in the chat asking what annular means exactly. It basically means a ring. It's a Ooh, ring. Okay. You'll see once we get into the annular eclipse, you're going to see this bright ring around the moon. Or excuse me, the sun. I've been I, I've been up for like 25 hours uh, <laughs> straight trying to deal with this Starlink situation. So wait, so don't so sit similar. inside with sunglasses on and look at the moon. I'm completely off. Everything no. I'm doing is bad. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> That's why we call him Derek the Astro Boy. It's Derek the Astro Boy. <laughs> It really is amazing how much mileage we've all been able to get out of that single photo. Hey, wow, there. that's incredible. You sent me like one you, photo. Hey, you, you all, I don't know if you're seeing this, but you see the ring actually connecting now? Yes. There it's it is. It's happening, people. It's happening. Annularity has begun. Oh my gosh, look at that. So cool. Whoa! That is incredible. I got to be taking a million pictures of this. Okay, so for everyone's sense of scale here, relative, not absolute. Sun is huge. The moon is pretty big, but a lot smaller. Um, both the sun and the moon on average are about half a degree wide in the sky. So if you hold out your, your fist at arm's length, wow. put up your pinky finger, your pinky's a degree oh across. God. It'll cover two That's of these. Good. So the sun's about half a degree and our moon is about 0.45 degrees and that tiny little difference and the fact that we have a lunar orbit that is eccentric, it changes its distance uh, depending on where it is in its orbit, we're at a point where I think we're a few days after apogee or the furthest distance from the Earth. And that's why when the apogee eclipses line up with uh, our, our eclipse dates, what we would call the nodes of the orbits, we get an annular one. If we're at perigee, where we're closest to the Earth, and it happens during eclipse, that's when we get those four, five, six minute long solar eclipses that everyone wants. So if you were seeing the eclipse back in 2017, that was only about two and a half minutes. Next year's total solar eclipse, almost twice as long. So if you thought 2017 was great, 2024 is gonna knock people's but, but, socks but, off. But Michael, what about 2045? What What's the... <laughs> The length of time for that Six eclipse minutes plus in florida uh, and there is an upper limit i think our upper limit is a little over seven minutes right now it's the longest you could have an eclipse go we're gonna have the longest eclipse visible from north america in florida 2045 get excited advances in modern medicine everybody let's get ourselves to 2045 look that look that's that's why i'm exercising so much now so i can be in shape for that eclipse okay I, look, look, for, look! That, people ask me all the time. Well, why do you go to the gym so much, there? Because I gotta be there for twenty forty five. I gotta it. be there. You gotta make it. I hey, gotta make it. Derek, I see like the sun changing the way I can see it, like uh, reflecting on your face, and I can hear people exclaiming in the background where you yes. are there in Utah. Can you describe visually, like, a sense of what you are seeing in person in that? I, um... I'm looking through my close glasses, and I'm seeing okay. a ring moon or a ring sun. The sun is a ring right now. People are just in awe. They're taking all their photos. People are just excited, jumping up and down. People are going, yeah, look, you got like, people jumping up and down. Uh, Justin's just staring in a like, meditative state. He's on his knees, just like in awe of this event. It, it's just, it's an incredible experience. Woo! It's incredible. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so right now for the time, what like where are we at in a four minute window of like the actual are we in it yet yeah we are that that we've been in a little the... annularity for the last couple of minutes now okay so it it technically ends here in like a in a few more no. few more minutes yeah few yep, more minutes been... okay we'll yep. keep soaking yep. it in nicole don't don't put I... an out date on it no expiration date let's just it. soak it okay. in here it's a special moment <gasps> it's oh, that yeah. ring of fire yeah! 
And what's so cool is that as you were seeing the moon move across the face of the sun, it, it's not a smooth edge to the moon. Like when you have this much backlighting, you can tell that there are mountains and craters and valleys that make that imperfect edge. Uh, it's why we are getting all of those sort of like ring effects. Now, how's that the temperature? Is, oh, feeling? I was I was hoping we were going to go to a. a oh, ring. oh, I. Yeah, I, it was I'm, it was I'm, a setup. I'm, I'm... There we go. There we go. Caught me sleeping. Well, I mean that that was like most of Derek and I's time together as a straight man, and then the funny man, and so you got to set up the jokes, and then he's got to go and knock it down. So. <laughs> All right. Um. So is it colder there now? Is it even colder right yeah, now? It's, it's 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 pretty chilly. It's pretty chilly. Yeah. Pretty chilly. It's pretty chilly. Uh. Wow, that is absolutely incredible to see this crescent, almost crescent sun right now. It's just, it's hard to, again, hard to describe. Uh, you know, and the videos, you know, doesn't do it justice. If you get a chance, try to get out to a place to see an eclipse for yourself. Try to get out there during the 2040, uh, 2024 eclipse on April 8th. you got to get out there to see it. It's, it's truly remarkable. Okay. Frank, how's it looking in Merritt Island? Uh, let's take a quick look. So, um, yeah, we're getting there. You know, it's uh, we're not going to get to anywhere near what Derek's seeing here. We're going to get about 63% coverage here in central Florida. So if we can uh, cut to my live view there, we can take a quick peek there. Uh, um, but yeah, it's uh, the clouds have parted. Uh, we have a good view here. And later on this afternoon, we should be uh, getting a good shot of our maximum coverage at around 1.30. Hey, uh, hey, we got Justin here. Um, Justin. Uh, what do you think whoa, about whoa, the eclipse? Whoa, whoa. You know, Justin. Everyone yeah. talks about. Wait, wait, hold on a second. I think we gotta. <laughs> just in time. It's just in time. Everyone you talks do it about right. the total solar eclipses and how incredible they are. We've we've had we've been so lucky to see a phenomenal lunar eclipse in in Florida, and then the total solar eclipse in 2017. But I would put this right up there. Yes. With it. Yes. It. it chills it it's it's surreal it's not it, it just doesn't even seem real it doesn't seem real i don't know if you've got the rest he's just he's just so excited he's so excited he just kind of went off you know uh but uh, i think you all got the the gist of what he said there nicole do we have a special camera hooked up inside derek's uh retina or inside the glasses that he has can we see what you're seeing derek we can only hear you at this point i uh, wish I wish we did. We're going to have to wait till next. If we can drive out to Arkansas in 2024 in April, I, I'm inspired now. I want to see it in the flesh. After seeing Derek excited, Justin excited. There's nothing to describe. So I want to tell you, so a lot of the people that are here right now um, are actually, we're actually doing a event right after this live stream where we're going to be digging in a special mine uh, uh, called the Cyril Canyon Mine for Red Barrel. And uh, a lot of the people here right now are actually going on that tour. Actually, we got the uh, mine owner here, J uh, Jeremy Fuller. Hey, how you guys so, doing? Uh, if you want to say something real quick, you want to come on this side. There we go. Talk a little about your uh, location here. Why? So we do uh, public tours at our mines. Uh, we mine for Red Barrel and Topaz. Uh, it's thegemtours.com. We'd love to have you out sometime in this beautiful West Desert. Uh, it's an amazing experience today with this eclipse. It's uh, life-changing, really. It's a beautiful event. Excellent. Thank you, Jeremy. And we even have another guy here. Uh, he's a he's a, another miner, a legend in the mining business, Brian Bussey. Brian, do you want to say anything? Yeah, I want to thank you for bringing this out and bringing the two worlds together. Rocks and planets in outer space and beautiful minerals and crystals from the world we live in. Thank you, Derek. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So, yeah, so that's kind of, so we have a big event going on here as well. So you hear all the cheering and all that. So after we're done with here, we're going to go celebrate. We're going to dig for some crystals. And a fun fact, the James Webb Space Telescope is actually made of beryllium, which is the type of mineral that we're going to be looking for today. So, again, space and rocks. You know, go in and in. Oh, speaking of rocks, um, since you went on your um, amazing 24 hour plus odyssey to ensure that you had proper equipment, that you're crystal clear what, via Starlink. Thanks, Elon. Not a sponsor yet. 
Okay, I didn't have to use this emergency footage I made of you hanging out with some rocks in the desert. You know, I thought if we couldn't get Derek on video, we'd have to bring him in somehow. See, did you collect some rocks such as these that we see in this um, very convincing video that I made? Somewhat, yeah. There's a little bit yeah. of uh, quartz in there and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely have boxes and boxes of rocks that are going to be shipped out uh, from this. Okay. Trip, so. And we'll uh, be yeah. hearing more about that, I'm sure, um, with a video or some other programming. Um, because, yeah, you've got so many things going on besides, okay, let's go back to your footage. I see some clouds, but we still... Okay, so explain to us what's happening now. So basically, the, the, the moon has just traveled across the disk of the sun. And it's now going to slowly exit off the sun. Uh, so in another hour or so for me, we're uh, pretty much going to be done with our eclipse. However, as the moon's shadow travels across the United States, Frank Kane will have his maximum view of the eclipse. So, uh, so stick around because uh, later on we're going to be able to see what Frank sees as his maximum view of the eclipse uh, in Florida. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to the comments here. Space rocks. Space, space rocks. Space rocks. And space rocks. It's a statement and it's a, it's space rocks. See, I'm glad you get it, Nicole. I'm glad you get it. You know, I, I of course I get it. I mean, we're, you know, we're brother. Me and Jason, I don't know if anyone knows. We're brother and sister. We're actually twins fraternal obviously and we're both the evil ones so we just like we think on the same plane like we we read each other's minds right all right maylin says that's cool definitely going to the next one yep all right road trip 15 seater van book it now we got we the Seminole that. state bus we got the Seminole state uh, bus that are, I are you handling that derek well you i mean i was that? asked i mean you know we, we, i don't know i, I got to learn how to drive one of those things and you know, save me I, a spot. Save me a spot. I, that Mike, Michael, does, do you do you trust me? Do you trust me, my friend? You 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 seen me drive. You seen me drive. I I I no comment. No comment. <laughs> I know. Look how he rides. Frank's the Frank's knowing chuckle. I think says it all. <laughs> oh, I missed that. Yeah, look at the way Derek um, slides across Saturn's rings on a skateboard. <laughs> That's why he's Astro Boy. He's up there. You know, he's down here right now, but he spends a lot of time up there. By the way, we were out here last night before I had the whole Starlink situation. We are in one of some of the darkest skies in the United States here. The sky was unbelievable. We saw the Milky Way, thousands of stars, plenty of meteorites, or excuse me, meteors uh, shooting stars. Uh, it was just truly remarkable. So that's not only, you know, not only am I here for the eclipse, but, you know, there's an opportunity to do a little bit of stargazing. We did a little bit of star tours with uh, some of the guests here showing off the night sky. Um, so it, it was, it, it's been a wonderful uh, experience, except for the epic voyage I had to take last yeah. night. I don't know. Somehow I bet when you look back on it, you'd be like, you know what? It made it even more it worth it. Worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. An adventure. Yeah, and it's a good reminder that uh, an, an extra bonus of these solar eclipses is that it's also a new moon whenever it's a solar eclipse. So extra special dark skies tonight for you, right? That's right. And we're hoping to take advantage of that here in Central Florida as well. Uh, the Central Florida Astronomical Society has a stargazing event out of Geneva for members. So a little bit of a perk and a little bit of plug for joining CFAS. If you want to get access to uh, dark sites around Central Florida, they do exist. And tonight's a great night for doing that because it is clearing up here, thankfully. Looking forward to some stargazing tonight here as well. Nice. And that's the Central Florida Astronomical Society? Oh, yes. Let me give it a plug. Fast.org. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about what we're doing and how to join, uh, you can learn more there. And we are tightly affiliated with the Emil Bureau Planetarium at Seminole State College. So uh, it's been a longstanding partnership between the two organizations. And together we do cool stuff like... Uh, loaning out telescopes to people and uh, organizing dark sky viewing events and organizing outreach events to local schools. So if you're interested, check it out. I think Jason's ready for cool stuff because I see him here in a fuzzy hat. Is that a fuzzy hat, Jason? Yes, this is to cheer. This is Yay. when we have annularity here. I'm in South Florida and I just wanted to make sure, but I, I gotta tell you, I've been watching Derek. Derek's looking up 
at the eclipse and then he puts the glasses on. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. Why do you have the glasses and then you put them on after you've been looking up there for 5, 10, 15, 25 seconds? Am I, am I off here? What's going on? I'm not yeah, actually so looking strange, at this, but I'm looking, I'm, I'm putting them on as soon as I look. So, so <laughs> fast. That's what I'm saying. Why don't you He's put them on before you look? <laughs> no, you gotta put, you gotta do this and then look. And then you gotta look, and you gotta do that! You do it again! It's Derek the Astro Boy. Yeah. Wait, 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 one more. You gotta do this, and then look! Ah! And you do it again! It's Derek the Astro Boy. I gotta, I gotta be honest. We specialize in this, and I, I think you do too. It's, it's a little bit cringe. I'm not saying it's a problem. <coughs> Cringe. Not saying it's a problem, but I'm just putting it out there. All right. So it's 1239. So the moon is it's on its way back to the other side. How fast is it going? Isn't it like 7,000 miles per hour that like it's passing by the, the sun? It's pretty fast. Okay. That's all, that's yeah, all that's you got to know. Fast. It's pretty fast. We don't, we don't need to worry about numbers. Facts really and figures. Fast. Okay, yeah, I was just, getting hung up on the facts and figures. That, that's 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 all you need to know. It's pretty fast, you know. All right, <laughs> and we're looking over. Oh, Frank, I was just popping up um, your oh. view because, as you can see, I we've got like a crescent out where Derek is, right? Oh yeah, that's cool. And then a semi crescent. I don't know what what do we want to call that. Uh, a really fat crescent. I'm a not sure if there's a technical crescent. term for that. We can make one up right now if you want. Okay. But, uh, right now, it's clouds. It, 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 it's it's kind of like clouds. a Pac-Man almost. Kinda and Frank, like I believe yeah. the kids today call that a thick crescent. <laughs> oh yes, it's spelled F. Yeah, with yeah. two C's, right? Three C's in a row. Three correct. C's now. Gosh. I'm, well, I'm the out. two at the end, and then the one at crescent. Yeah. yeah so nice. clouds came through. Okay, popping yeah, back over did. to Utah. Because once again, because the Earth is round. Because the Earth is round. Okay, just. Saying, putting that back out here on the internet, just re reiterating that for everybody everywhere. Um, so you don't, you're not seeing the same degree of coverage. I don't know, Frank, are your clouds gone yet? No, uh, wait, wait, now they oh. are. They're, they're oh. just oh. emerging as we speak. Look at that. Okay. Oh, no, so, there they go again. Oh, okay. No. It's like one cloud in the whole sky and it happens to be right there. Oh, like, there it goes again. It's cool. really spooky. I know. It, it's very Halloween y, isn't it? It's like, oh, you should yeah, see yeah. this starting to appear Ooh. yeah yeah normally you Some see that with the viewers now starting to think of uh werewolf thoughts and then every yeah. time the <laughs> the clouds go away they just come right back to a watcher <laughs> it's very cool yeah that's frank there's something it. about your mm -hmm. your feed that that uh, i hope you know we can help out the the viewers with like looking at derek's feed um his son looks a lot different than yours yeah let's and... go there uh, and wondering if you could give us a little insight as to why we have these different views of the sun with the telescopes. That's right. So uh, I believe Derek has what we call a white light filter on top of the end of his telescope, right? So uh, even though people like to think that the sun is yellow or orange, in fact, it radiates white light. This is what it really looks like to the eye. Um, <laughs> So unless it's sunset, you know, when it's refracting light and all that, yes, it can get red then. But during the day when you wouldn't be looking at it in the first place, it's not orange. The only reason it looks orange in my view here is because I'm using a specialized telescope called a hydrogen alpha telescope. And it looks like this. So there's sort of a special filter at the end that only lets through one wavelength of light. And that's associated with hydrogen, ionized hydrogen that's being emitted by the sun. And because that wavelength is toward the red end of the spectrum, it ends up looking red in the live view there but also because it's a narrow wavelength that lets us see more details on the sun as well. So while uh, Derek's getting good good view of that disk of the sun, by narrowing things down to this one little wavelength, we can see more detail on the surface of the sun, the individual sunspots, the individual flares, and uh, the individual cells that are on the sun's surface. And later on, when we uh, focus more on the Florida stream here, I'll uh, zoom in and show you some of the flares and uh, prominences that we can see on the edge of the sun through this telescope as well. So yeah. cool stuff. Uh, just to reiterate, you're looking like right now we are looking at the sun. Like we're not actually looking at the sun, but we're looking at the sun. Like we're looking at Derek's footage. We're looking at Frank's footage. That's the sun. 
That is the sun. That's right. That is the sun. We are looking at the sun safely. <laughs> and just to, just to make sure Jason doesn't understand, I'm going to put the glasses on first, and then I'm going to look up. And then I'm going to look down, and I'm going to look Okay, so just to be clear, we don't have to put on a breaking news press release. That is the sun. Right? Are we all in agreement, That's the Nicole? sun. That, that's, that's okay, because we, we kind of had... We had a breaker there. There was like, a little breaking news. Isn't it awesome? We are looking at the sun. I just didn't even like was like, what? I'm looking at the sun? I don't know. It's just still amazing to me. And it's a really amazing to me and I'm sure to most people. The sun is in the exact perfect spot. Not one millimeter to the left or the right that it could be and life be possible. It is exactly precisely where it needs to be. It's the amazing. Bigger, it's yeah, amazing. the bigger coincidence is where the moon is, right? I mean, like it just mm -hmm. happens to be at this point in time exactly where it needs to be to completely obscure the sun and no more, more, no less. Like on average, it's pretty much exactly the apparent size of the sun. And a few hundred million years from now, that's not going to be the case because the moon is slowly getting further and further from the Earth. So it's not just a coincidence in in time in space; it's also a coincidence in time. So it's so, pretty freaky when you think about it. So that oh, yeah. means that annular eclipse. Frank, when's are, that are day going to be? More when's that day, more Frank? Off? Let me write that day down. <laughs> One hundred million years from now, every eclipse will be annular. Yeah, is yes. that on a? That's a Wednesday. Uh, we we can move that to a Thursday if you prefer. Oh, I thought yeah, we couldn't do that. that hold, hold on. Hey, I see. I um, Library Ross Martin. Um, oh, where did it go? Uh, li did you have your um? Where'd it go? No. Ross, I uh -oh. do you have a screen share with the um uh, the I, the the path of annularity, but I it's do. not. Oh no! Let me try again. Okay. Okay, we'll try to see it again because that was we've been talking about that, but that shows the visual of it. No, it's all right. Technical difficulties. Technical like technical like difficulties. It. It's a live broadcast. We're librarians. Do <laughs> footage, 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 footage. You know how to look into the sun. He puts the sunglasses on like 20 seconds after he looks at the sun. Nice. And then he tells me that's the way to do it. But I'm not so sure. Your boy also goes underwater. If you didn't notice, he was in that little bubble. Okay, Ross, let's let's see if uh, I don't know, Ross. It was like it's in your footage from your computer is in a black hole. Ross, describe it. Pantomime what the website said. <laughs> it's it's the NASA website that uh, is, is not there. Has the whole path of this uh, eclipse, and I would love to show it to you, but it it does not want to be seen. I think anybody the way else, you described it. Can anybody was, else got, come to the rescue? To shortly it. here. Uh, we I can tell you, oh. annularity has entered into Texas. So we've now moved from Utah back at uh, 1030 your time, Derek. We're now about, you know, 15, 20 minutes later. Uh, so I think it's uh, Central Texas should be receiving their maximum annularity uh, as we speak. You know, you know, Michael, you, you, you're representing IPS, International Planetarium Society. What is the International Planetarium Society? Uh, it's uh, it's interesting you should ask that, Derek, uh, as a member of the International Planetarium Society. We are the world's largest organization representing planetariums, and uh, we have uh, nearly 600 members. Uh, we've got representation across the world, uh, and it's the planetariums that often are these uh, very accessible science gateways for people around the world. There are uh, many planetariums around the country here in the U.S. today uh, that are holding eclipse viewing parties. And uh, some of you I know on the stream uh, more than likely have been clouded or rained out like we are here in Pennsylvania. Uh, but it is an awesome way for us to you know support the community and help get audiences uh, aware of these sorts of things. And, you know, most people don't have access to telescopes with solar filters um, or the, the knowledge to be able to like fully understand, contextualize what they're seeing. And planetariums do a great job of that. So a shout out to all of the planetariums uh, who are participating in today's uh, viewing of the annular eclipse, but also 
a particular shout out to the Emmobile Perpetual Trust Planetarium. Uh, as Derek has probably buried the lead, uh, he is our executive secretary as well. So uh, to be able to work with him over the next few years, we're about to start the Planetarium Centennial this month. It's been 100 years since the first Planetarium Projector. And to have these domes that do this kind of outreach and Derek, you know, thanks to you out there in the middle of the Utah desert with a Starlink receiver uh, streaming some live uh, eclipse uh, footage. Yes, thank you, Astro Boy. Good job, Astro Boy. Okay, listen, I think it's time for us to take a break, right? We're going to do a little intermission because coming up at 1.15 um, EDT or Eastern Time, Eastern, what does EDT stand for again? Because I kept putting EST on everything. Is that the old way of saying it? Eastern yes. Daylight Eastern Time. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, then we, we do have um, the um, maximum annularity in Merritt Island. So how about we go on intermission? All right. We'll go uh, visit the concession stand, folks. We'll visit the concession stand. We might have a, a couple word, a couple, a cup of word, a couple words from our sponsor. So we'll see you back here in a few at 115, okay? Bye. I'm going to go uh, recalibrate the telescope during this time, so I'll be back soon.
Have you ever needed an adhesive, lubricant, and all-purpose cleaner at the same time? Well, today is your lucky day. Hi, Cargo Bay's here for Mars Goo. Mars Goo is like WD-40, duct tape, and zip ties all rolled into one inside an easy-to-use plastic container. Mars Goo was discovered by NASA in 1976 aboard their Viking 2 Martian lander. Mars Goo has been NASA's best kept secret for the past four decades. Until now. Now we're here on the streets to see what real people think about Mars Goo. Excuse me, miss. Do you goo? Yes, I do. Now, what do you use Mars Goo for around the house? Uh, well, I use it for a lot of things. I use it to clean uh, the toilet. I use to clean the bathroom with. I use it to clean my roommate's kitty litter box. Um, I've actually used it to cheat on tests. Um, I go fishing with it sometimes. It, I, I make repairs in my car with it. It's, it's really great. Now, how long have you been using Mars Goo? Um, well, I'd say ever since I saw it on TV, so. Amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's Mars Goo. Do you goo? You've seen what Mars Goo can do for you around the house. So now you may ask yourself, how much for this revolutionary product? Well, for a limited time only, we're offering Mars Goo for an introductory price of just $19.95. But wait, there's more. Call within the next 20 minutes and we'll give you not one, not two, but three containers of Mars Goo, lubricant, adhesive, and all-purpose cleaner for just $19.95. Here's how to order. To order Mars Goo Adhesive, Lubricant, and All-Purpose Cleaner, please call 1-800-404-1985. Again, that's 1-800-404-1985. We accept checks, money orders, and all major credit cards. Mars Goo. Do you goo? Not legal in 49 states.
All right. We've got Frank and Merritt Island. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That was my emergency backup footage of Frank in case we didn't have him straight from Merritt Island, but we do. All right. Let's turn mics on. Let's bring some people back into the stream. We had our intermission. We've got Derek. We've got Info J, Information Jason, of course, Frank Kane. And we also have Library Ross Martin, who real quick before we get to you, Frank, I asked Ross during the break, can you ask ChatGPT to tell us how to explain an annular solar eclipse to a child? What did ChatGPT say? It worked. <laughs> I wasn't even expecting it to work. So <laughs> here's what it said. Uh, it likened it to a, a bright, shiny coin in the sky, uh, but the moon is a smaller coin, and that creates a ring. Um, so it's like a bright, shiny ring. Da, da, da. It's as if the, uh, the sun had a shiny ring on its finger for a little while. Wow, how about that? Wow. Are you sure it worked? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of terrible. Hey, it's, it's, it's a new, it's my a fear is the of course. The of course <laughs> at the beginning. Sure, Ross. <laughs> Located okay. at here's your and address. Of course, if, if you were here for our intermission, you heard a word from our sponsor, Mars Goo. Jason, did you call that number? What happened? Did uh, I called call that I'm number and to get Mars Goo. I'm still on hold with a, a very friendly customer service representative, but my credit card, Nicole, is standing by. And let's just say I'll be frank and blunt in front of everyone here. I'll pay anything for that product. I don't care. I'll pay anything. It's <laughs> amazing. Yes. I also do. I'm hooked. Uh, yeah, okay. And I also do want to give a shout out to another one of our, actually our biggest sponsor, Gravity. Without Gravity, we could not have pulled this all together today. Ooh. So that, oh, ooh, yeah. See, Frank liked that one. Okay. All right. That one's for the books. I'm going to use that one later. It's in the back pocket. All right. Let's pull up. Um, so what's Pretty going heavy, on in Merritt Nicole. Island? Pretty heavy. <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you did there. Oh, Gravity. <laughs> All right, we're, we're in Merritt Island right now, taking a live view of the partial solar eclipse here. We're expecting about 63% coverage here in central Florida, and that should peak in about 10 minutes from now at 1.28 p.m. is when that's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, like we said, you know, if you don't have a pair of uh, solar eclipse glasses like I do here, um, you know, don't look at the sun without them. If you do, great. Um, if not, though, you can do the whole pinhole camera trick, though. Try to find a tree that's casting shadows on the pavement below you, and you might see bunches of different shadows that look like this little crescent, which is pretty darn cool to see. Uh, but we're getting there. Uh, this is live from this solar telescope here in my driveway. And you can see there we've got uh, this telescope itself. This is a specialized hydrogen alpha telescope, they call it. It's made just for looking at the sun. And you can see at the end there, there's a little red camera attached to the, to the end of the, the business end of it. This is on a, also on a special solar mount that automatically tracks the sun as it goes through the sky. So I don't have to go out there and keep adjusting it too much. And you can see that little wire that's feeding that back to the computer. That in turn is feeding it back to my office, which in turn is feeding it to you out there in YouTube land. So cool stuff. YouTube yeah, land. on behalf of everyone in YouTube land. Thanks, Frank. That looks really cool. <laughs> awesome. Yep. All right. And then um, Derek, let's get a vibe check. Um, I got a bid for that. <laughs> the energy out there, is it down now that y'all have um, gotten past your premium annularity? Is that what it is? I'm sorry. Yep, the pretty much the, the eclipse is, fin is, is almost finished. Um, but um, we're kind of shutting things down because we're getting ready to do the... Uh, the, the tour but honestly the view that we're going to get is pretty much ex pretty much what frank's going to be getting at this point so uh, uh at this point okay. really the the main show case is, is going to be frank but we're we're kind of tearing a few things down trying to get everybody packed up so once the live stream is over we can make our way over to the um to this the mine did you guys all exchange uh did you meet new people and exchange information so you can snap your chats later i sure did there's actually a guy that wanted all some of my photos and we've got to meet some really cool people here and and all that so it's been a it's been a lot of fun awesome awesome all right still so cold. how many still cold here though i it's mean still... It, we're, it's still cold i'm like shivering out here 
<laughs> so how many minutes are we away from the first um, uh, beginning of the peak of the annularity of, in the Merritt Island? <laughs> Frank, help me out here. You're an expert. Well, we're about eight minutes away from uh, the maximum coverage here. It's not going to look a whole lot different than what you're seeing here right now, but I did zoom in a little bit here to show you a little bit more detail on the sun itself. Uh, one good thing about using this uh, specialized solar telescope is that you can see more detail on the surface of the sun itself. And, you know, as you get toward the middle of the day here in central Florida, the atmosphere becomes more and more turbulent. So it gets more and more difficult to see these finer details through all that turbulence in the atmosphere. But there's still some cool stuff you can see. There's a really nice little sunspot there. Uh, just to the right there of the moon. And like Michael was talking about earlier, if you uh, squint a little bit, you can see that the outline of the moon there, that dark shadow from the moon, is not entirely smooth and round. You can sort of see some hints of the mountains on the moon itself there, which is kind of a cool thing too. Also, I want to uh, blow out the exposure on this and try to show you some of the prominences on the surface, on the edge of the sun here as well. So what I'm going to do is increase the camera exposure and kind of blow out the sun itself but I think that should help us see on the edge there, those flares and prominences that are coming off of the sun there. Let's see if we can zoom in even more on that. Oh, there we go. Leave that back up there. Now, isn't it true that during eclipses um, that uh, scientists are actually able to, um, to study or actually take better photography or images or footage of like the um, corona, is that the atmosphere around the sun that you can't really like study it as much during like when it's just like no eclipse going on? Is that right? That's right, but only during a total eclipse. So during oh. an annular eclipse, uh, we don't have that uh, corona showing up. It's not actually blocking out the entire sun. So this the moon, you've heard of like super moons, right? Like the media gets all nuts about them every, every few months. Uh, so what happens is the sun can get 10% roughly bigger or smaller from average. And when it's 10% bigger, we call that a super moon. When it's 10% smaller, I think that's called a micro moon, isn't it, Derek? If I remember right? Yeah. That's um, right. My micro moon. Yes. So in the case of what we're seeing right now, we're below that average. So the moon is not obscuring the entire solar disk. And there's just enough sunlight to mess up seeing that corona. So... Um, it's a cool thing to see, the whole ring of fire thing, uh, but we do not get the full show of the solar atmosphere and the corona that you get in a total lunar, total solar eclipse. Okay. Got to wait till uh, April for that one in, if you're going to be out in Texas and along the line of uh, totality in April. Okay. Hey, Ross, um, you also pulled up that um, the map again. Can we see if it'll show up? Oh, yes, we picked another. Okay. Can we... Um, Let me try so to make that bigger too. sure if you can so uh it's been referenced many times during this broadcast by our experts that um and i keep forgetting the name the path of annularity um so we can see where um uh derek's out there in utah so that's in the western united states and of course frank's in Merritt island, island florida so it's not like in the direct in that direct um path but um that kind of gives you an idea of uh where the best viewing is and then just because it's rotating around the earth that's round so it looks different everywhere yeah you're seeing the path of the shadow of the moon itself there so um you know if you're right underneath that shadow then you get uh maximum annularity we would say for this particular eclipse and funnily enough in uh, april the total eclipse is going to be running in the other direction so it's going to be starting down in texas again but then running up through maine so a little bit easier for people on the east coast to get to for that one uh, so don't miss that on april 8th 2024 if you can get out there nice groovy music <laughs> yeah is it hey i don't want you to fall asleep i can switch it up we've got other stuff wait hold on we, we don't want wait that was a brand asleep. new one hey derek on. there's somebody creeping behind you derek somebody's oh, behind yeah. your shoulder don't look derek <laughs> oh, you <Wait>. <laughs> this <laughs> music away <laughs> I'll wake you up every time, Frank. Okay. Hello. Are you Book there? A party. Okay. <laughs> so who's all here? So we got um Who do we have? So uh, this is my friend Frank. He's uh Ooh. one of the uh, other miners here. Um and um he's with oh, Frank. Uh, I got a video people. for Frank. <laughs> Frank will do. So, 
uh, one half of the camping couple. Yeah, well, yeah. So they're part of the camping couple, and uh, so they're miners as well. Uh, but he was asking us who's all part of this. So we got fruit. We got some library stat. We got Nicole. Uh, we have Ross. We have Jason from the library. We got Michael, who's a uh, good my my best buddy, and uh, also worked with me at the planetarium for many years. We got Frank Kane, that is the president of the Central Florida Astronomical Society. Frank? So. We have another Frank. Oh, that's awesome. We have another awesome. Frank. You got a good name. Yeah. Absolutely. That's He's one. Right. Frank. You're, you're the rock Hard to find. Aeronautically oh, transport me to the lunar so, yeah. Okay, Frank Kane. How much? So, but yeah. So, anyways, there we are. All right. How many minutes away are so what we? What are y'all talking about? Two minutes. Two minutes. We're two, two minutes. minutes away from maximum coverage here in Central Florida. And, uh, well, you know, not a whole lot's going to happen special two minutes from now. It's just going to look a little bit more covered than it is now. But we're at the peak of uh, what the show's going to be here in Florida, which is still pretty darn cool. I mean, uh, the sun's looking kind of more like a crescent moon right now, which is kind of a, a reverse of what you normally see. So that's a novel thing. Kind of interesting, though, you know, unlike uh, in Utah, where we really saw a change in the lighting on Derek's face there, it doesn't really look any different outside right now, right? I mean, you would see a lot more reduction in the sun's light from just a, a cloud passing over it so if you were outside right now you probably would have no idea what was going on unless you actually had a pair of eclipse glasses or you're watching this live stream or you look at the shadows from the trees on the ground because they would look pretty weird right now we're getting there one more minute all right one more minute um let's see here hey i can do a quick plug oh Oh, a quick plug. What quick one plug. before that? I just want to say anybody that's watching, if you have questions, keep them handy because we'll do a official Q and a session, um, shortly here. Absolutely. If you have any questions, throw them in the chat there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, anyway, um, ah, where'd that come from? Go away. All right. Yeah. I'm the president of the central Florida astronomical society. So if you are interested in going deeper down the astronomical rabbit hole, head over to cfast.org and join us it's not a whole lot of money and uh you can get benefits like our loner telescope tel program and dark sky observing nights like we're doing tonight out at geneva and uh outreach events you can be a part of as well so do check that out also a quick plug to the emil bueller planetarium they'll be having their grand reopening on november 3rd and we'll be out there in support of that and after all that blathering it is 128 this is the maximum coverage for central florida right now 63.8 percent coverage of the sun by the moon that we're seeing here live from Merritt Island. Pretty cool. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more there. Also, if you're looking up uh, live through your solar glasses, you might notice that the views kind of flip from what you're seeing in real life. Um, when I go outside, I, I took a quick peek while during the intermission there, and it's actually coming from the, uh, the right to the left in the real world here. That's just because my camera's rotated kind of a funny direction. So uh, you can see there's sort of a red round camera there stuck into the eyepiece there and depending on which way you spin it it'll have a different orientation but hey there there is no up in space right it's all it's all relative it's, uh... oh, oh. Zinger! Not even really, that. that's like kind of for a burn we don't have a video for like a really good joke like congratulations on your really good joke sorry i don't have that I am a dad, so you know the dad jokes just come naturally sometimes. Okay. Oh wait, a good joke knocks your brain out of the park. <laughs> good lord. Cheering for a TV joke. <laughs> there you go. Wow. All right. So oh, what are we looking at now? Are we blowing out the exposure? Or are we? Zoom yeah, in. I'm going to try to zoom in. Let's uh, take a look at some of those prominences on the uh, edge of the sun there as well. You know, it looked a whole lot crisper earlier this morning when there wasn't as much turbulence. But let's see if we can uh, at least get a hint of what's going on there again. And I'm going to zoom way, way in if the UI here cooperates, which it isn't. Oh, come on. Who designs this stuff? It's one of those like drop down boxes where if you leave the scroll bar, terrible things happen. Ah, I just missed it. Anyway, let's pretend that it's zoomed in. You can see like along the edges here, right? Like there's a big solar flare there, a big prominence. 
another one over here on the left. And what's cool about observing the sun is that it changes every day. You know, I was uh, taking some images of the sun about a week ago, and there was a massive one that was actually getting blown out into space. It was almost like a uh, coronal mass ejection kind of a thing. But uh, that's Excuse a fun thing. Excuse me, what did you just say? I kept it clean. A coronal mass ejection. I know. I like to say that. Yes. <laughs> I was, can you repeat that again? Because I want to be able to pull that out of my back pocket so I can sound like an expert. Coronal mass ejection. Coronal mass ejection. That sounds serious. It can be if it has your way. You know, I mean, uh, if one of those things uh, heads towards Earth, it can mess up, you know, the electrical grid and satellites and stuff like that. So uh, the sun can be a violent place, as you can see here. I mean, you can see it's kind of roiling with energy there. And you can see all these flares edge on here that's happening and all these cells of just uh, raw power coming out of this fusion furnace that is the sun. So, uh, Michael, I saw you shaking your head. Do you have something to add? I, as Frank's getting all of the, the prominences there at the edge of the sun tuned up, the, the sense of scale here is really way off for us. Um, if we go back to, to Frank's uh, uh, view, those prominences along the edge of the sun, some of them could be as big as the entire earth as in you could put the earth next to one of those uh, and you know this is this is a star that's you know well over eight hundred and fifty thousand miles in diameter this is the biggest thing in our solar system it is 99 percent essentially of all of the mass that makes up our solar system and our little earth with all of the you know close to eight billion people we have on it and of course all of the 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 literally dozens of us that are on this live stream right now um, everybody's on that tiny dot that can sit next to one of those prominences uh, and the biggest ones can be jovian size that's you know ninety thousand miles give or take or even bigger than that uh, and so if we get a really favorable uh, prominence during a total solar eclipse these are big enough for us to be able to see with just our eyes during totality so really like this is scale that we're not used to working with um and just to be that little dot next to one of these huge prominences like keeps things in perspective for us i think yeah that's a big attraction of astronomy to me just the perspective it gives you and like a reminder that uh the universe is a pretty big place so maybe your little problems here on earth aren't as important as you think they are you know derek is it still cold out there it's it's cold I, Jason, I, uh, can you yeah. hand him your hat, please? Keep please. it warm. Please, Jason, I need it. <laughs> All right. Oh, can I get a hug just, from that? Oh, thank you so much. Reach down thank and you. grab thank the hat out of thank the box. Thank you. Oh, oh, I feel so warm already. Thank you. Uh, Michael, do you know Brad Rush? Because he's asking, who is that good-looking guy in the infomercial? I'm assuming for the Mars goo. I think uh, I, I've, I've heard the name before. So uh, it's probably somebody I work with, maybe. I'll, okay. We'll see. And you have so um, many fans; but, it's hard to keep track. Right? Look, Derek and I have been dealing with that for twenty years. You know, just the the number of people who get excited about, you know, little Astro Man and or little uh, Astro Boy, <laughs> was it? It's Derek the Astro Boy. <laughs> yeah, you know, Astro Boy, and then tall Astro Man next to him. Yeah. It, Although, Derek, now that I think about it, it's been 15 years since we recorded those videos. It's been a while. So It's been a while, yes. yes so th uh, that, that, that cargo bays looks a little different than, uh, <laughs> than, than today. Let's just say that. There, there's another one of me as well that it was like an infomercial that was based off of an old Win Microsoft Windows ad that uh, I look a lot different too. There's a lot less facial hair, a lot more roundness to my face. Uh, which isn't a good thing, you know, so. All right, remember, this is where we are right now. We are on the Planetarium's YouTube channel at Seminole Planet on YouTube. So go ahead and search that channel later after this live stream, go to the videos tab and scroll down and you'll find a bunch of funny videos from these two guys for sure. So check that out. All right, Frank. You making some new adjustments, Frank? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as the moon is uh, starting to pull away from the sun at this point, I'm just zooming out a little bit to capture the whole thing here. So uh, the whole Pac-Man is getting a little bit bigger here. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was maximum coverage here. I see we had one question in the chat here. Will we see the ring of fire in Florida? Uh, no, we are not on the path of annularity 
here in Central Florida. This is uh, this is as good as it's going to get right now. In fact, it was as good as it was going to get about seven minutes ago. Uh, but it's still pretty darn cool. I mean, the moon's in front of the sun, people. I mean, that doesn't happen very often. So <laughs> that's no, it's a fantastic. And I know that's a new scope that you have, Frank. So I'm glad that you finally been able to get it out and share yeah. that with everybody. Yeah, I'm addicted to this little thing, you know? I mean, it's been a very cloudy summer here at night, so uh, if you got the astronomy bug, having a solar telescope to see some uh, the star next door, you know, during the day, it's a pretty special thing. And, uh, I, um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, no, go ahead. I was go just ahead. gonna say, you know, we take it for granted, you know? There's a, there's a star there in the sky all day. I mean, how often is that? And, uh, you know, you can actually see details on here that change every day. So every day it's a different show on the sun. Every day there's new prominences, new flares, new sunspots coming into view. Um, it's just a really awesome thing to observe. And you mentioned the astronomy bug. And I think a lot of people are here today, Jason. Yeah, pay attention, Jason. I know we, we are the interrupters. Um, are already have the astronomy bug. But if you're kind of interested in it, but you may be like, you're like, ah, oh, it's not that. Ross, who's here with us in the stream has an array of astronomy based games that um so maybe like if you're interested in astronomy but you want another way to or maybe you're not interested or maybe you want to convince someone you know to be more interested in astronomy maybe one of those games could help them get the astronomy bug what do you think say ross sure yeah i mean i, I pulled out everything i could find that was space related behind me there and, and there are some games out there that are kind of like educational too uh there's a game called learn and it's facts you get the facts yeah. so okay it's fun and engaging and if y'all didn't know ross is actually like a board game is it board game or table game expert he knows he has a Thanks. wide collection he runs a board game group um so he's an expert so he he brought out all he has what how many games do you own how many board games a lot like a lot <laughs> oh, he doesn't even know hey ross show me the facts show me the facts um and you said you didn't have there's a game called eclipse and you don't have it i don't own that one no but Tell there is why, it's a very ross. it's a very popular game it's just not That's my kind of thing okay so yes, there is a board game out there called Eclipse. So check it out. It's probably available on Amazon um, or, you know, one of those other high profile retailers. All right. Any other updates, Frank, on our view here? No, we're just seeing the, the moon slowly pulling away now. So uh, over the next uh, roughly hour and a half, it's going to be uh, getting further and further away from the sun until it finally uh, frees it from its grasp here, at least uh, visually for us. And why, uh, so, why do we think that is, Frank? Did the sun do something wrong? Why is the moon slowly pulling away? Is it passive aggressiveness? I mean, what is the... <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's just getting bored with it, yeah. Okay, I mean, is that... Yeah. I mean, let's just be frank. If that's what it is, the moon... Hey, and, let him and be frank. Let oh, him be frank. Oh, let you be frank. We'll oh. let you be frank. We'll oh. you be frank. Okay. Oh, Sorry. And Jason, God. I think you might be anthropomorphizing A rock. Uh, the moon. Yes. Okay assigning a, a, per, a man or a person a human qualities to something that is not human anthropomorphizing anthropomorphizing i'm not going to make a banner for it because i don't know how to spell it okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so um let's go ahead and make sure that we cover any um if anybody has questions that they haven't asked yet in the chat or if anyone on the panel any of um anybody in here has a question for someone else on the panel um, let's go ahead and take care of any Q&A that we can uh, address with our experts here. Okay. Well, I've got a question for Derek. Yes. And this may be shameless self-promotion for next year, but what are your plans for the April 2024 total solar eclipse? So I'm going to be over in uh, Arkansas and uh, we're going to be doing another live stream. So uh, hopefully this was a great opportunity. Hope you ever, all of you like this and uh, would like us to do it again. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, this was a great opportunity to learn uh, how well the Starlink works and uh, and all that. So I'm really excited about doing more of these. And of course, uh, hopefully many of you, uh, I think there was a question in the chat. I don't know if that was answered because I did lose a little bit of coverage. Uh, actually, we were running the Starlink off of a battery which died, so we actually hooked it up to the RV. Um, and hence why we're not sharing the uh, telescope view anymore, because we had to swap it out. But anyways, um, 
if you get a chance to go, there's still plenty of time. Uh, you you could either you, I recommend people if you're close by the drive. Um, you don't have to fly to a destination. Just find a place that's closest in the path of totality, and just head out there and uh, try to get an opportunity to get to go out and see it. Because if you haven't seen a total solar eclipse, you need to go and see a total amazing experience. Something that everybody will find truly wonderful. So uh, there's still plenty of time to get out there. Try to find the closest path place in the path and uh, have fun. Nice. So we've got a question from Mylan. Um, what would be the best lens and filter for my Canon RP to be able to take pictures of a solar eclipse? So basically uh, any telephoto lens is good. A 200 millimeter lens, a uh, 300 millimeter lens. Um, you could get the 100 to 400. Any type of telephoto lens would be great. And then you want to know, you, you want to see what your filter size is on the lens. Uh, it can range between uh, 74 millimeters to 90, 94 millimeters or, or 100 millimeters. But you want to figure out what the filter size of the front of the lens is, the, the filter size that you would screw on the front of the lens. You want to know how large, large that is, and you want to get a solar filter or, or a solar, something that allows to block the light of the sun that's big enough to actually cover that uh, lens. And uh, different companies, um, Rainbow, uh, not Rainbow Symphony, Thousand, a Thousand uh, Oaks, uh, a couple of other solar telescope companies, Celestron, Orion, a lot of different manufacturers sell solar filters, Daystar, um, Lunt, which these are all names of companies that sell reputable solar filters that you can attach to your camera lens. And okay. then to just briefly tack on to that, that there is one really important thing to remember when you're doing any sort of this photography uh bring a tripod make sure that you've got a tripod for this because especially on the telephoto lenses there's just a lot of handshake and that magnification magnifies your your vibrations as you're trying to hold it and trying to hold it and looking it up uh so make sure you've got a nice solid tripod uh it'll make every other part of your uh, photography experience all the much better so uh, everything Derek said gets you the shot. The tripod makes sure uh, that the shot looks as good as it can. Absolutely. Nice. Okay, I have a quick question. Is it true that the moon um, in its rotation is not going in a perfect circle? It's kind of like in an um, ellipse. Not yes. not to be confused with eclipse, but an ellipse. <laughs> is that true? Yes. Yes, the the fact that it's on an ellipse is why we have an annular eclipse right now. So that's a pretty cool way of putting it. Uh, because it's on an ellipse, that means that at certain points of the uh, of the of the year, it's further away from the from the Earth than it is normally, and at other times it's closer. And when it's further away, the moon looks a little bit smaller because of perspective. And that's why today is an annular eclipse because it's not totally covering the sun uh, because it's just far enough away that uh, it's not quite big enough relative to us. So yes. Yeah, and not intending to make everybody like hungry right now, although I think Derek can probably mm. go for a lunch at this point. Um, if you were to see a full moon at its closest point to Earth, its perigee, um, be the equivalent of, say, like a 16 inch pizza. And the moon at apogee, where it's farthest from Earth, is the equivalent of like a 14 inch pizza. So while there's certainly a difference, uh, the it's not something where if you were looking at these pizzas from a distance, it'd be easy to figure out which one's going to be the larger. It's the difference between a 14 inch large pizza and a 16 inch large pizza. That's the difference of size of moon we get because of the eccentricity of that orbit. Right. It's like plus or minus 10%, right? And uh, that's part of why a lot of astronomers get a little bit annoyed at this whole super moon madness that the media gets into whenever it happens, because it's not that super people, it's 10% bigger. Like you would never know. I like that pizza analogy. I think that Ross's chat GPT might have listened to that and is storing it for later because that would have been a good a way to explain it to a novice for sure. Um, we've got another question from Mylan. Um, best place to see the total eclipse in April of 2024? Honestly, the best place to see the eclipse is the best, the closest place that you can go that you feel like you can, you can go to. Uh, Weather-wise, uh, you, you increase your chances if you go to places like Texas, um, and then it gets kind of 
more and more less uh, less favorable as you get further north, uh, especially during in April. So the most optimal place to go would probably be Texas, then Arkansas, and then progressively into those other states. But last year, uh, or this year, I should say, the weather forecast has been kind of all over the place. And people that would normally historically be in a w worse part of the zone actually had good weather. So it, it's really, um, you know, again, try to find a place that you can know for sure that you can go to, and you can afford to go there, and uh, just kind of keep your options open. When you get closer to the date, you know, you might need to drive a little bit to get to a spot where it's clear. But really, if you're gonna if you're gonna bet in the United States, Texas will be probably the the less amount of cloud cover um, it, for the eclipse. Okay. Yeah, to go along with that too, it's like Texas has the largest number of large cities that are either in or very very close to the eclipse path. Uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, both of those inside the eclipse path. Austin, San Antonio. Uh, I think San Antonio, it splits the city in half. So it's like 99% in some parts of the city and totality in others. Uh, and even Houston would be something like an hour and a half drive. So combining the infrastructure that exists uh, with, you know, airports and roads and things of that sort, and combining that with the fact that generally in that time of year, Texas is going to have drier weather and that should mean fewer clouds uh if you can get there it's the way to go there are of course some other uh very very big cities along the path um totality goes over indianapolis and buffalo uh montreal is just inside of the path uh just uh inside of the path the detroit just outside of the path so a lot of places where hey an hour or a 90 minute drive is going to put you right smack dab in the path of totality and now you've got an opportunity to see as uh, Derek and, and and I think Frank can attest to, um, one of the most life-changing experiences you could ever have is seeing that total eclipse. So if you've got the means to do so, find a way to do it April 8th, 2024. It's going to be well worth it. And now, if you're really seriously considering it right now, I mean, immediately would be the time to seek out accommodations and other arrangements that you will need because I did a little bit of research and it looked and people are saying, hey, like hotels are booking up and, you know, uh, you got to book a rental car, find a place to stay. I even searched for a campgrounds. Is it Arkansas or is it going to go through um, Kentucky or I can't remember the state, but it was like not Texas. And I thought it was like closer to Florida than going to Texas. And already like campgrounds were filled up. So listen, if you are watching and you are seriously considering it, Get started on that now, right? I don't know if you all have any tips on the type of accommodations to look for, or do you have any like booking tips or is, is just traffic get bad during these times in these locales or worse? Like I have no experience with it. Oh, well, he's laughing because traffic is always, yeah. Traffic is terrible. And actually when I was driving out here, there were uh, signs all on the interstate saying, expect major delays, solar eclipse. I would say, try to just kind of hunker down for the day of the eclipse and just hang out there and then and then travel the next day after that or the day after that try to make a trip out of it uh don't don't just go there and have to drive back the same day um i, I i'm a person that i you know i don't mind roughing it going out you know camping or like in this case here just literally out here in um you know public land and just setting up an rv um, so really, um, if you're somebody who really needs a lot of accommodations, hotel, motel, Airbnb, whatever you want to do, uh, definitely look, the, the sooner you get that, the better. Uh, but you know, if you're, some people are totally fine with just sleeping in their car for the night, uh, you could do that as well. So, um, you know, the, the more stuff you need to, for accommodations, the sooner you want to do that. Nice. All right, let's see. All right, we've got greetings to all from Anton. Okay. Wow. All right. So, Frank, we still got your footage up. Is there anything that um, you want to cover about this footage before we start wrapping it up? No, we're still seeing a live view of the uh, partial solar eclipse here in central Florida. And uh, over the next hour or so, that moon is going to keep getting further and further away from the center of the sun until uh, the sun gets back to normal. And I'm sure. Uh, 
well, to anthropomorph. How do you even say that word? Anthropomorphize the An sun? An yeah. That's a very librarian An word. Anthropomorphize. <laughs> anthropomorphize. Yeah. Yes, it's looking okay. forward to getting its regular self. I can say annual, yeah, <laughs> annularity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, is it annular or annual? No, it's annular. People is a big difference. Well, uh, that's kind of the trick, and we yeah. we were thinking, oh, it means yearly, but annular right. literally going to the Latin root means ring, right? That's right. Yep. Ring. Ring. Yep. That as in ring, ring of fire. Of, uh, excuse oh, me. Oh, ring of uh, burning fusion. <laughs> Hey, Michael, can we even call it fire? Like, it's technically not fire, I don't think. Like, that would imply. I, I, I mean, you are technically correct. As we <laughs> all know, that is the best kind of correct. Uh, yeah, the, the, the sun is a massive incandescent gas. Uh, and, of course, we're basically looking at plasma. Um, we've taken gas. We've superheated it. This is an object that is uh, predominantly hydrogen. And of course, we're fusing that hydrogen. Not we, of course. The sun is is fusing hydrogen in its core, um, and what we get is energy and helium. And that is the the engine uh, that's driven our star for uh, about four and a half billion years, and will continue to do so for probably another five billion. And then, you know, we're, we're going to get a really good eclipse in about five billion years, where the sun expands into a red giant and then completely incinerates Only, the Earth. Jason, get your calendar out. The final you know that? Eclipse. Michael said five billion years. And it's probably Jason will probably Sunday, be on a it's Wednesday. It's about three. Wednesday, Wednesday about three p.m. Yeah. I got there's a I got something a Zoom interview. Yeah. <laughs> so once that eclipse happens, there will of course be no more. Uh, but yeah, we we get this this you know, it's again to to something that Frank said earlier about you know one of the reasons why people like astronomy so much why why we get uh, into this why Derek and I have been running planetariums for our entire adult lives uh, is that there is all of this amazing all of these amazing stories to tell uh, about the universe. Um, we sit on this planet, we look up at 93 million miles away, there's a essentially a million mile wide star that pumps out light, you know, there's more energy that comes out of the sun in a second than we would use in something like a million years. Um, and so it's just trying to put it all into perspective and, and understanding like our place in the universe, it, we can feel kind of tiny, um, we can feel pretty insignificant sometimes, uh, but also remember that our ancestors looked up at the skies, our descendants will look up to the skies, and it's what connects us to the rest of the universe. It makes us part of the cosmos. And so um, whenever you feel a little small because the universe seems really, really big, that's okay. Like that's not to get too philosophical on an annular eclipse live stream, uh, but that's what makes us human. And the fact that we can enjoy it and we can in, like interpret it and we can appreciate it, hey that's that's pretty good on our part like I, I don't think there's any reason for us to feel bad about it um that, that that's deep mike that's deep. it's yeah. so deep i'm looking for do i have a deep a video about something deep um i think the closest i have is you just took us to happy valley happy valley all warm and fuzzy inside thank you michael hopefully <laughs> you feel a little bit warmer derek thank you <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, he I, needs the, it. The, the, the sun is finally warming up. Justin doesn't have his shirt, a uh, jacket on anymore, and uh, you know, all that. So it's, oh, it's, it's, I can hear people driving away. They're people like, are, it's done. Bye. It's done. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, this has been awesome. Thank you, everyone that's been watching, everyone that's been um, commenting. Once again, you have a bunch of people here from Seminole State College. Got to shout out Seminole State College and Central Florida, go state, go far. Thank you to Derek for inviting us quirky library people um, to hang out today for this awesome annular solar eclipse. Thank you to Frank Kane from the Central Florida Astronomical Society and also Michael McConville, president of the International Planetarium Society and Justin, wherever he went, and Thank the, the you, moon, Justin. Nicole, and the sun oh. and the moon Thank have played a moon. vital part Thank in today's sun, broadcast. We can't stay happy. We, we, would, we wouldn't be able to do what we did without the sun and the moon. So Talk Thank about you, planning. Oh, no, Talk about planning. Oh, Derek, you didn't. No, quit looking. No. <laughs> and sorry right. to everyone who was looking for the annual ellipse. That was on a different program. That was a different channel. The annual <laughs> ellipse. Yeah. A completely sorry. different vodcast stream. 
Yeah, uh, we didn't our waste condolences. Your time. Uh, sorry to anybody who watched this thinking it was that. Uh, we're very sorry. All right. So just wait for it because we will be back. We've got April what? 2024? What day of April? Oh, we Eighth. had it on the screen. Eighth. April 8th, 2024. Okay. Like, share, subscribe, get ready for April 2024. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. We'll see you not too far from now. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.